Well, today on Nation, a window cleaners podcast, we're talking all about selling yourself. And no, I'm not telling you to go out on the street, but I am going to show you and talk to you all about how to sell yourself, your company, the thing you do and the services you offer. We're talking sales, USP, repeat. We're talking all of it. So if you're in business, stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. What's up? If it's your first time here, have a look around. You know the drill. Um, if it's not, you know you're going to like the episode. This one is a good one because we're talking all about selling yourself. And every single time we talk about this, I kind of put it out there and uh, we go over certain things, different aspects of it. This one's going to be great. This is going to show you and talk to you all about how to sell yourself and your company, your services, like how to convey the message that you're awesome. So it's going to be a good episode uh, either way. But if you are in business, uh, window cleaning, pressure washing, any type of service, you have to sell yourself, right? You have to put yourself out there. You have to somehow convey to the person, we'll call them the stranger in this case, why you're the best choice. We have to basically figure out why somebody wants to buy you. Like, how do you sell yourself? There's lots of window cleaners. There's lots of pressure washers. You know it, you see it. You know there's competition in your area. By the way, if you're on YouTube, how many competitors are in your market, would you say? Just write the write the number and your city. I would love to, to know what your thoughts are. But if you're talking Bucket Bobs too, I mean, that adds even more. Those guys that are just doing this for beer money. There's legitimate companies and there's not. But how do you sell yourself? Like, how do you put yourself out there and convey the message to somebody that you're awesome? Sometimes people kind of forget that. I mean... If you're on any type of Facebook group for window cleaners or any of these groups, you always see people out there that go, hey, I did this. It doesn't work. Ah, there's this one guy who uh, trolls the group, and I won't even give his name any love, but uh, he is a one of the banes of my existence, is uh, unfortunately, as a moderator. But his thing is he can't even sell a, a, a window or a pain for like eight bucks. Can't even sell that for eight bucks. Inside and outside, it's like half of anything else. The market's just really bad. No, it's not. The hard truth of all of this is, and by the way, if uh, I upset you in this, please do email me and tell me how upset you are. But the hard truth is, and people forget this, you can be good at sales and selling yourself and conveying that message, or you can suck at it. I know guys who, uh, I had a guy just a little bit ago who says, uh, yeah, ads don't work. Nah, I did an ad, it didn't work. I said, you got a split test, you got you just did one thing you thought was cool, you put it out there, it didn't come back, and you went, yep, not doing that anymore. That's ridiculous. People forget the fact that they have to be good at selling themselves. It is not a one and done type thing, right? Like window cleaning companies, you can't just be like, hey, I clean windows. You put a number out there and then you run your whole business from that. I mean, there's a message, there's a this, there's a that. There's so many aspects to it. There's so many pieces to you, your company, why somebody buys you. If you've fallen into the other thing is, I'm not going to talk about this, but the TikTok door knocking trend thing that... I know, you know, it drives me bonkers, but it's the same thing. They're really good at, at selling themselves, but they're better at creating a really bad experience. It's like, how are you selling yourself? You're getting somebody to say yes, but all you did was keep dropping the price and pressuring them until they say yes. Like, that's not business. That's not how a successful business is built, right? So in this whole business thing, you have to figure out how to convey the message. I mean, that's really what this is. Sales in general, I know sales has this like slimy kind of, you know, car salesman. I heard an interesting thing. If I said to you right now, think in your head salesman. 
Everybody pictures a slimy, you know, tight suit, fast talker, overconfidently kind of, you know, douchey fella who is, you know, putting it down to you, not making eye contact, looking for the next. Like, that's sales. But if I said a professional salesman, it changes. A professional salesman, you know, they're, they're informative. They're helpful. They're on your side, right? They're making you knowledgeable to make the decision. And that's what selling yourself is all about. Sales is the first piece to this. If you're having trouble closing things, if you're not getting the work you want, if your ads aren't generating big numbers, it's not the market, it's not Biden, it's not competition, it's not all these new guys in the market. It could very simply be your skills could use a little tuning up. And it comes down to sales. Sales to me is just explaining why you're the best choice. Sales is the reason, or I should say the way that you explain why you are going to handle all of their issues, their problems they have, the pain points, why you are the solution to their problem. If somebody comes to you and says, hey, uh, I am 2,000 miles over my oil change. And you go, well, you know, we, we clean your windows perfectly and we have a seven-day rain guarantee. If their problem is not something you can handle, you're not going to sell them window cleaning to get their oil changed, right? That's a drastic example, but now think about it on the other side. If somebody comes to you and says, hey, I just... I, Man, I know you guys do this. They're just looking terrible. You know, my mother-in-law is coming or gosh, I just really need to be done. You know, it's, I really want to see outside. Oh, my flowers are so, listen to what they're saying. And you're saying, hey, I can handle that for you. And I can take away that pain point and make this happen. In all, in all sales, there's enjoyment and there's pain point. There's combinations but you gotta listen to what it is. But that's sales, you're basically selling yourself, but you have to be good at the sales part. And this is the part that people kind of sometimes don't focus on enough or do enough with, or even see that it's something they have to do. But I have no problem. I listen to sales books, uh, podcasts, and, and um, all audio books, all of that, all the time. Everything around sales. How do you talk to people? How do you convey it? You have to be good at sales. You have to be great at sales. Now, if you tell me, you're like, no, I don't sell. I let my service sell itself and blah, blah, blah. And you have that kind of thing in your head. A, you're wrong. But B, everything you do in life is sales. You see that girl at the bar you want to talk to. You want her to go on a date with you. You want that big contract to land. You want a better deal on that truck you're buying. You want anything in life is sales. You're either selling yourself or a reason or your views, your opinions. You're selling all of that to somebody else. So sales is a really, really, really big thing. And especially if you own business, everything comes down to sales. Everything. You have to sell someone to use you, to try you, to repeat with you. You have to sell somebody on why your experience is the absolute best so they're blown away. You have to sell somebody on why they need to give a review or tell their friends. Sales is absolutely important and you can't forget that part. Reading or listening to podcasts or books, anything could hone that. And it sounds ridiculous. I know you're not a salesman per se, but that is the number one thing of yourself is you have to be better at sales. And everybody can be. The best salespeople in the world can always be better. But you also have to know what you're selling. More importantly than what you're selling is you have to understand why somebody's buying or would buy or wants to buy or should buy. And you know I can't talk about this type of thing without bringing up USP because this is, if you've listened to my podcast, you've heard me talk about it um, quite a few times, I know. But I'm guessing, unless you are the 0.5% 
of window cleaners that have this part dialed in, you're absolutely lacking. And it's cool, let's figure it out. But it's the USP, it's the why. Five window cleaners standing all in a row, nobody could say anything about price or dollars. Why do I hire you? Well, we do, we're meticulous. We clean those windows so nobody cares. Because before that fact, clean is clean. I'm hiring you to clean, right? If you bring your car to a car wash, it's always clean unless it's not clean. But you can't go to a car wash and the car wash part goes, we clean it way better. No, you may be more meticulous. You may do other things while you do interiors or... You know, we can, if you look at the USP, you can see their specific things and why they do what they do different than somebody else. But if you bring a car through a car wash, it's going to be clean. Otherwise, you don't go to the car wash. If you get your windows cleaned, it's going to be clean. If somebody calls to get your gutters cleaned, the gutters will be clean. Like, no one cares if you clean the gutters way better and you can eat out of them. No one cares. They want them clean. They're clean. It's a word. It's a done. It's a yes or no. It's a black or white. So why would somebody pick you? Now, this is the interesting part. And the shocking part is that people just throw something out and they don't think about this. This is like a career long thing. You have to understand the why somebody would pick you. Because if you ever look online and somebody goes, oh man, I just bid this house for $350 and the next guy came in and did it for $100 and they chose him, oh man. I can't believe it. I can't. I got to lower my prices. Wrong. Wrong. Here, let me ask you this. If somebody is selling you something for $350 and somebody is selling you something for $100, why would you pay $350? If you don't have that answer, then you're going to pay $100 because all you can view is the dollar amount. But like if one of them is a, you know, a, a, a skateboard and the other one is a brand new motorcycle well it makes a lot of sense then once you're you can envision the value and what you're getting in the one you can sell something for any amount of money there's always going to be those people out there who want to be cheap that's that's always they're always there but those are the ones too that the next guy comes in for a dollar less and they drop them that's not really who we're looking for but the why is why somebody hires you now, I'm talking about things that make you unique. When you go, well, we're fully insured, or yeah, we, we drive, you know, we have logos on our, tr yeah, lots of companies have logos on their trucks. Lots of companies are fully insured. Lots of companies do the things you do. You have water fed, they have water fed. If it is not something that just you do, it's not unique. Because if two people have the same thing, you cross it off. Because it doesn't matter, they both have it. It's off, right? So if you said, hey, I am going to buy that skateboard. They both have the exact same design on them. They both have the exact same wheels on them. Okay, well, then the wheels are in a selling point because they both have them. The graphics are in a selling point like they both have them. The unique part is why somebody buys you. Now, this is a very, very long thing. USP is something you have to think about. People throw this back out and... And I love when people respond when I say, what's your USP? And only three people respond and they go, you know, well, I'm fully insured and we do great work and, and I'm, I'm a very polite person. Pretty sure everybody's polite. Otherwise, they're not having customers. Well, they put somebody else in that, right? If it's not unique, it's not a unique selling point. So you have to figure that part out because you can't sell something until you know what you're selling. By the way, if you like any of this content, uh, I've been doing this podcast now for six years, but I am a rep for windowcleaner.com. Please let me put your orders in. I would love nothing more than to be your rep. I mean, big orders, small orders. When you go to checkout at windowcleaner.com, instead of clicking checkout, you just click the button right above it, words that say save this cart. And then just text me and be like, yo, Jersey, it's in my cart. If I place it for you, it costs you nothing extra, not a penny more. I can check fitment for you, whatever you need absolutely do everything I can to make it a best, the best experience for you. And it costs you nothing more to do it that way, but I get credit for the sale. So it's like an awesome virtual high five. Like it is literally how I exist on this planet is doing this stuff.
So please do that. Also, uh, go out and get the American Window Cleaner magazine, awcmag.com. It's uh, phenomenal. It's an, a paper magazine that goes to your door with stickers. If you see everybody with these stickers all over, that's from the magazine. So go and do that. Um, and also, one other quick note before I get back into it. Uh, my YouTube channel, personal YouTube channel, is Jersey underscore Nation. If you search that, just subscribe. Cost you nothing for that either. And uh, really, I'm trying to build that up. Lots of new content there. Smaller, quicker things. <clears throat> anyway, go watch that. Listen to that. So you know you're selling. You know now what you're selling. Understand you're the professional. The big thing that people always say is when, hey, I can't do the dentist clothes, we'll say. It's just not worked for me. Well, okay, the reason it's not working for you is because you didn't take that and make it like a fact. If you're unsure of something, they're unsure of something. Somebody goes, calls and goes, hey, uh, uh, if you clean my windows, will you scratch all of my windows? And you go, um, no, I don't think so. They're going to go, oh, okay, well, I'll let you know. But if you go, no, absolutely not. You know, we make everything we can to not scratch windows. All of our equipment has been used thousands of times. It does not scratch windows. They go, okay, great. Well, let's do it. Right. The way that you say things is the way that people listen to them. If I am not sure of something, you're not sure of it. But I'm the professional. When somebody asks you a question, you may be new. You may have one job under your belt. You may have... 20 years into your belt. When someone asks you a question, you are the professional. Convey, you know. Convey they're making the right choice in you and make the decision. Hardline decision. Yes. No. Absolutely. You're cut, like, make the decision. The people who kind of flounder on that, those are the people too in sales that don't sell. They're the guys that, you know, you talk to them and somebody goes, hey, uh, you know, do you, um, you know, here's our house. It's, it's pretty big. Do you think you can get to that? And you're like, oh, man. Uh, yeah, well, we, we could probably try. <laughs> you know, I mean, only, only way to know is to try. They're like, oh, uh, okay. But if somebody comes to you and says, hey, what soap solution do you use? Our soap is a Titan Labs Glass Gleam 4 in water. That's it, but it's our gear. Our equipment is always brand new, nice, top of the line, the best we can get in a scrubber and squeegee. And we change our rubbers every single day and that's why our results are so amazing. That's confidence. Oh, yeah, all right, huh, cool. But if you're like, oh, we just use soap, like we just, Little little soap in the water. That's that's all we kind of do, you know. Oh, well, sounds like something I could do. Everything comes down to your the professional. If you are not sure, they're not sure. They're trying to find a reason to hire you, but more importantly, they're trying to find a reason not to hire you. And you have to understand that what they're buying is a solution to their problem. But we're a luxury service. No matter what any doofus in a Facebook group tells you, this is not a need. No one needs to window clean or get their windows clean. No one needs to have their windows clean. No one has ever died because their windows are dirty. That is not a need. It is a want. Now, if you're a restaurant and you get ticked, you know, uh, you get points taken off in your health inspection because your windows are dirty, you're getting closer to a need. Still, if everything else is perfect, you don't need that because you can have some points taken off. But it's getting more of a necessity. But in every other case, in every house you do, in every job you sell, every commercial property, and every whatever, there's not a need. It's a want. Understanding that changes the dynamic of how you sell something. If you need life-saving surgery, if you need heart surgery or you will die, if you need brain surgery, 
What do they talk about in a need? They talk about, hey, if we do this right now, it has to be fast. We have to get this done. It will save your life. The chances they're living are blah, blah. They're very, very, they're explaining their needs. No one ever is like, oh my gosh, you're in the ER. You need heart surgery right now or you will die. Let's go over uh, our pricing structure. So we are the lowest in our area and we have a coupon. And that's a need. There is a big difference in a need and a want and how you sell it. Nobody needs a Lamborghini. So guess what? No one sells a Lamborghini on price. No one goes out there and goes, we are the lowest price Lamborghini dealer in the metro area. Nobody does that. What do they do? They show you a guy in a suit sipping champagne in the most luxurious you know, car dealership ever with fountains and hors d'oeuvres, right? Come to us. You want the best experience for all of this? Somebody who's going to value in your awesome decision to buy the best car on the planet? Come to our car dealer. Sell the service for what it is. These guys that go, it's a need, it's a need. They're the ones that, that drop price and drop price and drop price and drop price. And they're always competing in bonus price. And stuff. You don't have to be the lowest. The only reason that somebody buys somebody lower instead of you is because you didn't tell them why they're paying more for you. You didn't give them the value. You just told them the price. Do you think anybody anywhere has ever been shopping for a Lamborghini? I made up my mind. I'm buying a Lamborghini. The money's in the bank. Buying a Lamborghini. Well, I could buy that Lamborghini or I could get that uh, Honda Civic. Yeah. Ooh, Kia's looking good. Nobody who's shopping for one defaults to the other because of the price. Now you're a price shopper. If you're a price shopper, fine. You're not buying a Lamborghini. But that's not who they're selling to. If you think for one second somebody's out there about to sign the paperwork on their Lamborghini that they have more than enough money for, they've made their decision, but instead they found a cheaper car. That's what you're conveying when you tell me that this other guy beat you out because his price is cheaper. Well, if it's just for window cleaning, do you clean the windows? Yes. Do you clean the windows? Yes. Are you $200? Yes. Are you $100? Yes. I choose you. The only information I know is the price. But if you explain everything and why they're paying for you, the it doesn't. It, it, you're the Lamborghini. Now you you can't charge five hundred thousand dollars for your service. Obviously, there's there's that market. But if you offer five hundred thousand dollars worth of service, there's going to be a market for you. If you're losing to the guy who's half, but you can't tell me why somebody should pay more, then yeah. They're going to go with the last because you haven't told them their value. Create the experience. Understand your value, not the price. When we talk price, it's just for no, like to know, right? To, to understand, right? There's times you don't even have to explain your price if you get to a certain level that people just love you. And let me give you, if you don't believe that, if you don't truly believe that, have you ever gotten a referral ever? A, the answer I hope is yes, if you've been in business. But you get a referral and it's Mrs. Jones. She says, hey, my friend Cindy was just talking about how awesome you guys are. Oh my gosh, you were there and your one tech, you know, like took your shoes off. I think that is so awesome. She said, you guys did an amazing job. You're so friendly. I want to sign up with you guys. Awesome. What's your address? Here it is, blah, 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 blah. Are you also looking for inside and outs? I am, yes. And I'll be home on Tuesday and Wednesday of every week. Does that work? Yes. You could get done with the whole thing, never give a price. Why is that? Well, she's not price shot. She's the same thing as anybody else, except she comes with the understanding that someone had you Love the experience. And now she doesn't want a window cleaner. She wants you. 
It's not about price now. It's about the value that you and only you bring. It's like somebody calls like, oh my gosh, my friend had the greatest time and she cannot stop talking about how awesome you are. I need windows done. Oh my gosh, I'm out there getting three bids. Please tell me your lowest price. They don't do that. But when somebody knows nothing about you, they come into you, they're looking for price to get the understanding to see if you're in the ballpark. Or in a tire kicker situation, hey, it's gonna be $2.99 for inside and outs. Oh my gosh, well, I was thinking like 20, 30 bucks. Yep, we're way off. Hey, I do apologize if anything changes, let me know. Price could dictate if somebody goes into it. If I'm gonna buy this bottle of water right here and I go into a place and they're like, hey, it's $32 for the bottle of water. No, it's not. My, my, my idea and my comprehension was it was gonna be a buck, maybe two. Ugh, if I'm on a cruise, five. Not 32, like if you're way out of the ballpark, now if something comes in and they tell me how magical that water is, if it's just water to me, I'm like, I'd I'd rather just have water. I don't see that value of $32. But if they, you know, come to me and they could tell me all these things and the the facts of this special water where they put, you know, things in there that, um, you know, help me, you know, get 10 years younger and muscles and, you know, everything else. If there's actual facts to any of that, it makes sense. But with that same thing being said, there's a bottle of Fuji water at a gas station for $5 or there's a gas station brand water for 89 cents and people still buy Fuji. Why? Maybe they like the taste. Maybe they like how it looks. Maybe they like that their friends see they're drinking Fuji water. Why do you think Starbucks coffee has their logo on everything? Even water cups, you can get Starbucks coffee logos on like Yeti coolers or whatever. It's because people go, oh, I have Starbucks and it's my thing, right? That's brand recognition. They like that. They buy it for people seeing them. This is your thing. Your value is what you're selling. It creates an experience. And the biggest thing you can do is get those repeat people back. If you know what your value is, you know why somebody chooses you. You put it all out there and you provide the experience that blows them away. You made them so happy. I mean, if you're done with a job and people are like, okay, cool, well, thanks. And that happens on every job you've always ever had, you're doing something wrong. You have not created an awesome experience. It's gonna be 10 times harder for you to get a repeat customer because they're not ecstatic. But if you're creating something where you were awesome to deal with. It was a simple process. You had a great thing. And then when everything was done, you gave them a fresh baked chocolate chip cookie. All they remember, everything is so great. I can't believe it. Look at all the light. This is so amazing. Awesome. Your next service, did you want to then do three months or did you want to wait six months for that? Getting the repeat is selling yourself at the peak of their happiness. At the peak of their happiness. The thing is, when people are addicted to drugs, they're always chasing the high. They're always chasing that feeling they had. But as you know, if you've ever heard or read or anything in studies, is the first time it will never be that. So addiction happens when people are chasing that feeling, that feeling, that feeling, that feeling, but never can get there, so they have to do more things to try to get to that feeling, but it just makes it worse. Worse and worse and worse and worse and worse, and now they're stuck, they're in this. It is incredibly hard. I know some of you have dealt with that. You understand what I'm talking about. The best feeling ever was at the time you did that. The best time ever for somebody is at the time that you sell them the service. They're never more excited with what you've done and what they get from what you did than right then and there. Why not sell them when it is the easiest time for them to be happy? They're gonna chase, oh, this is so amazing, this is so awesome, I absolutely want it again. Yes, let's do it in three months, let's do it in six months. I wanna feel this awesome and happy in six months. If you wait even a week, Oh yeah, yeah, you guys were out. No, things look good. It's done. They're on to something else. They're they're ecstatic feeling. They they can't remember their ecstatic feeling then. If they can, they can remember a thing, but it's not the feeling of when they feel it. 
resell them on repeat at the time of service. The dentist close. I coined that term dentist close for the fact that your brain will then understand that when you go to the dentist, which I just was there yesterday, when I'm all said and done, the lady was literally like, okay, cool. And just so you know, six months is going to be March. Like uh, March 15th, still afternoon, three o'clock work. I didn't go, oh, what? How dare you try to get more money from me? I went, yeah, that works. I don't know what I'm doing then, yeah. Let your brain understand the dentist clothes. Is you go to the dentist, it's cool. No one's ever questioned it. Now they have this window cleaning. They feel absolutely amazing. No one will ever question it when your confidence, because you're the professional, is there. You've given them the experience. They are so excited because everything fell into line and what you did worked. They want it again. That's the rotation of selling yourself, is getting people, telling them why it's you, showing them why it's you, and then having them want you again because you proved to them why it's you. Sales is extremely easy when you understand what you're selling, how you're selling it, and why you're selling it. But people miss that part. They're always looking for the new customer. They chase that thing, but they just miss the system of selling yourself. I hope you don't. Either way, shameless plug again, uh, I'm a rep for windowcleaner.com, so please do let me put your orders in. It's uh, jersey uh, at windowcleaner.com is my email, but my text, 862-312-2026. I love, love, love. I mean, really, you'll never, ever, people send me like, hey, you think you can put an order in? I'm driving. I would love to put every order in. I would love for you to be in the computer, able to do this, but instead you let me put your order in. Nothing extra, not a penny more, but I get credit for it and I get to buy more name brand hair gel or I get to buy more of my name brand great value bottled water. Living the life. But anyway, go get a magazine subscription. Please do. American Window Cleaner Magazine is phenomenal. It's awcmag.com. Go get the subscription. And again, if you got a second right now and you're listening to this, search my YouTube channel. Just go to the search bar. It's at Jersey underscore nation and just subscribe, please. I love when uh, my videos on that channel get a whopping 21 views, but I would love even more if I could get more than 21 views on every video that I put my heart and soul into. <laughs> but go ahead and subscribe. It costs you nothing extra. And I'm done off my thing. If you haven't yet, please do invest some time into learning the sales side of what we do. More importantly, go out there and be epic.